In this tutorial, what we're going to do is take a look at a little bit of basic GIMP work so that we can use it to uh, modify an image for use in our games. So there's two different ones that you've got at the end of the week five set of tasks. You've got one here with these um, little flapping birds, and then we've got a sprite sheet from what looks like the Mario games. Uh, the process for doing this on either one of these is exactly the same though. I'm going to use one from the Mario ones just here. So uh, step one is to save the image that you want to work on. So I'm just going to right click, save image as. I'm going to go into my H drive, into computer science, into year 9, uh, Pi game, and for me personally I used an images folder, and in actual fact I've already saved mine here because I had a little play with it earlier on, and you'll click on save to save the work in place. What we're going to do then is use a program called GIMP. It's a little bit like Photoshop. It's quite a lot like Photoshop actually, uh, but it's completely free. You can pick this up for nothing and you can use it at home. And there's even a link actually at the top of the badge task here to allow you to do that. So you can always have a little play uh, with that if you, uh, if you enjoy that side of the work. And now at the moment, what I've got in Python is when I run the program, I've got the actual GIMP logo that's coming up, that's tracking around. And the objective here really is to try and change that to a little Mario or a Luigi or those little flapping birds, something different basically. So let's look at how we're going to do that. I'm going to start off then by loading up GIMP. You can find that possibly on your desktop or by clicking on start and typing in GIMP. In fact, for me, it's sat here ready to go, so I can load that up. It'll take a second or two to load. If it's the first time you'd load it up, it might take quite a while indeed. And eventually what you'll end up with, I'm just going to minimize my browser window, eventually what you'll end up with is something a little bit like this here. So you've got a toolbox over on the side, got some various brush options, uh, and then you've got a window where your images will appear and some various other parts for things like layers and brushes. We're not going to use any of that today. The first thing I'm going to do is give myself a bit more space to work in. So I'm just going to maximize this window so it blows up a little bit bigger and I think I'm going to drag this toolbar and just pull that just slightly out of the way so it's a bit easier to work with. I'm going to spend a lot of time here in these tools in this session. Something that happens quite a lot, let's just get this out of the way uh, straight away, is sometimes you might find you'll accidentally cross off your toolbox a bit like this and you'll want to get that back. If that happens, just click on Tools and New Toolbox and it'll come back again with all the same options. Admittedly, mine now looks slightly different, but all the same options are in there. I just had some brush options underneath that I don't need for what we're gonna try and achieve. So I'm gonna go File and Open, and I'm gonna browse into my H drive, get a window that'll come up, there it is. Uh, so into my H drive, into my, uh, might take a little while, Computer Science, there it is, here nine, Pi game, and Images, because I'm using an Images folder and Mario sprites. So uh, which one of these would I like to use? I reckon I'm going to take uh, this one just here actually I think. And I'm just going to try and cut out just that one image. And I need to try and do it as accurate as I can. So let's look at a technique we can use in GIMP to get really accurate image selection. So I'm going to start off by grabbing hold of this tool up here, this rectangular selection tool. Uh, and I'm going to move the mouse over closer to the general area that I want to select. Now at the moment, uh, if I try to highlight that, it'd have to be really, really, really precise. It'd be much nicer to zoom in. And it's very, very easy to zoom in. If you look at your keyboard, you look in the bottomest, leftest corner, you'll see a control key, it says CTRL on it. And if you um, hold that key down on the keyboard, and then you roll the mouse wheel forwards, so you roll it away from you, the computer will zoom in and you can get a much nicer view at those sprites. So I'm zooming in quite a lot actually, and I've got a really good close-up view of my, uh, my Mario sprite that I want. So then, using my rectangular tool, I'm going to do a bit of a wide berth because we're going to fine-tune it. I'm going to click and drag, and you can see as I'm doing this, it's drawing a nice rectangular selection around my picture of Mario. So I'm giving it quite a wide berth like that. And now to fine-tune that, I'm going to hover my mouse inside the selection I've just made. And you can see these different rectangles appearing, can't you, as I do this. And those are to help me adjust the edges of my image. I want it to be as tight as possible. So I'm going to move my mouse just inside this bottom box here. Click and hold the mouse pointer. And as I drag up, it'll move up one pixel at a time. So I can get a precise fit. So I'm just grazing along the bottom there of Mario's leg. Uh, I'm going to go up to the top, do the same thing again, so I'm pulling that one down, so again it's just sat on the top of his hat, and again I'm coming in here from the left and bringing it in, and finally here from the right. So I've now got a very, very, very tight crop, uh, an absolute pixel-perfect crop around Mario. 
What I want to do is I'm going to copy this to the clipboard. So you can either do Control C or you can go Edit and Copy. And that's now copied to the clipboard. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a whole new image file just from this selection. Very, very easy to do. I'm going to click on File. I'm going to go down to Create. And I'm going to choose the option that says from clipboard which is just here and what that does you can see in that window now I've got a teeny tiny single Mario again use the keyboard shortcut uh, holding down control rolling the mouse forward to zoom in on it so there's my Mario sprite that I've got now the platinum part of the task talks about this idea of using something called alpha and we need to kind of I think see it to understand exactly what that does so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Mario into my game right now Mario is 20 pixels wide and 27 pixels tall so I'm going to do it like this I'm going to go file and what I'm then going to do is I'm going to go export as because I want to save this as a special type of file and I'm going to save Mario as something called a PNG short for portable network graphic format by the way, bit of pub trivia for you there uh, and I'm going to call him call it Mario I suppose and I'm going to make sure, I can't just drop this in here, I'm going to make sure I'm in my H drive uh, and I'm going to make sure I'm in my computer science folder always make sure you save in the right place, one of the most common places to, uh, to go wrong is not saving the work somewhere consistent uh, and I've got here mario.png and click on export okay and uh, you've got all these different options that come up just here that's fine we'll leave those as they are click on export and what we're now going to be able to do then is modify our code so it's mario that appears in the game back to my code so at the moment I'm loading images slash gimp2 it's now going to be mario.png like that and let's click on play and have a little look at what's happened so there we go the uh, image is a little bit skewed it's not exactly uh, scaled up very well Mario looks a lot wider than normal so perhaps in my code I need to change that but there's something else as well you might have noticed that that gray background from the sprite sheet that was there in GIMP that gray background is still there and it kind of spoils the illusion if I've got a nice background image that are drawn on here of some scenery in the back having that big gray background would, would really spoil that effect and this is where the idea of alpha comes in alpha allows you in a graphics package to set a transparent color to make something that's invisible so that that way Mario sits on this black background perfectly let's look at how to do that so I'm back now in, uh, in GIMP and what I'm going to do is I need to pick all the pixels that have come up in grey a little bit like this and I need to delete them and remove them and take them all away so I'm going to do that with the magic wand tool which is this thing here, the fuzzy select and the way to apply it is to click once in the empty space that I want to make transparent and then use the delete key on the keyboard, not backspace, the one that's got delete written on it and you'll see it's gone to this checkerboard pattern that indicates it's transparent and I'll do the same in all the grey areas on my sprite and this one here. If I now save that image again, my Mario, like this, and it needs to be a PNG actually, so I should probably do this the right way. I'm going to go File and Export As, and then uh, actually I'm convenient in the right folder already. I'll keep it called Mario.png, and I can then replace that. Let's now try restarting my Pi Game game and look at the difference that that's made. So there it is, that's my Mario now, looking nice, and the background suddenly has become invisible, so I could have him swimming along in the sea, or something a little bit like that, to start to make my game uh, a little bit nicer looking. So that's how we use alpha with graphics to remove and, and provide a layer of transparency. And I'll see you in the next tutorial.